Aluminum for scuba tanks arrives in solid billets 18 centimeters, 7 inches across, and 5.59 meters, 220 inches long. Saws cut aluminum slugs the proper weight from the billet. A standard U.S. 80 cubic foot scuba cylinder requires approximately 14.5 kilograms, 32 pounds, of aluminum. A stamp records the aluminum's cast number on each aluminum slug. The number remains visible throughout the manufacturing process and is present on the base of each cylinder after manufacturing is complete. A forklift delivers prepared slugs to the extrusion press that forms the tank. 2,540 metric tons, 2,500 tons of pressure, force the aluminum into the shape of a scuba tank in 20 seconds. Friction heats the aluminum to nearly 147 degrees Celsius, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Aluminum is so malleable that it extrudes around the press piston. An independent expector checks each cylinder to make sure it meets government standards. He checks the thickness of the cylinder walls and base along with making a visual inspection of the inside looking for imperfections. Pressing the cylinder into a heated form creates the neck. The cylinder is single piece construction, no welding. The tanks are then solution heat treated to a T4 condition for one hour. A water quench and T6 aging process hardens the relatively soft aluminum alloy by changing its molecular structure. After hardening, one of every 200 tanks goes through tests that determine the tank's tensile strength. To conduct the test, a saw removes a coupon or portion of the tank. A 27,240 kilogram, 60,000 pound tensile strength machine pulls the coupon apart. The aluminum must not break prematurely. The crush test determines how much external pressure the tank can withstand. Machining and threading prepare the tank neck to accept a valve and every tank is checked with a thread gauge. A before and after view reveals the amount of metal cut away in the machining process. Every tank goes through hydrostatic testing before leaving the factory. The hydrostatic test measures tank expansion under pressure. Filled with water, tanks go into a water jacket. Testing equipment increases the pressure inside the tank to five-thirds its working pressure. The tank expands displacing water from the jacket. 
Measurements of the displaced water indicate how much the tank expanded. If the expansion is within acceptable limits, the tank passes the test. If not, it fails and can't be used. Markings stamped on the cylinder neck show the manufacturer's name and tank specifications, including service pressure, hydrostatic test date, and serial number. Sanding removes the dings and dents the tank picks up in manufacturing. However, individuals should never sand their own tanks. To serve as a base, each tank gets a base coat of primer. One or two coats of the tank's actual color comes next. The cylinder is then oven baked to cure the paint. Each tank must pass strength, metal chemistry, and cosmetic inspections before shipping. 